Where's the gunpowder barrel? In the bush. I think we just have to take this like normal. Eyes on. Only the strong can see that golden sands must fall. Bell, Merrick, and all those weak souls that have scuttled back to repair it. They will soon realize that resistance is futile. Take this compass. It will guide you to all you require. Now go, join my reapers, and take a step closer to your eternal reward. Now that's cool and all, but our friend was skipping over a few details. You see, the most recent update to Sea of Thieves incited something of a civil war in the community. Those who want to rebuild the Golden Sands outpost and those who want to destroy it. What would motivate somebody to put themselves on either side of that war? Ah, that's a tale as old as time. Cosmetics. That's right, contributing to the war effort unlocks a couple limited time cosmetics and the winner of this war is going to influence the future of the Golden Sands outpost. I had no intention to wait for the result of that war instead taking it over immediately to stop anyone from rebuilding it. But first, I wanted to see what Rare had added in this update. To start this adventure, we have to talk to Lorena at another outpost. Here she tells us that she heard something about a figure skulking around Wanderer's Refuge, and with this likely being Reaper business in the making, we should go and take a look at that. And much to our surprise, we immediately found something very interesting when we arrived. Hey look, a Reaper's robot. Wait, for real? Another Reaper's here? These particular red glowing rowboats are what we need to use in order to blow up the outpost. We were under the impression that we had to at least complete one of the deeds that came with the adventure, but apparently those things could be found out in the wild as well. So of course, we did what we always do and decided to take it to Golden Sands instead of following the quest as we were supposed to. You see, the adventure itself kind of functions like a tutorial to teach you how you can contribute to either of the sides. It's also what awards you the cosmetics at the end of it. But blowing it up at the outpost regardless of the adventure would still contribute to the Reapers winning the war. So we did exactly that before returning to Wondo's Refuge in order to continue our quest. Once we had defeated the local wildlife on the island, we had to find the Servant of the Flame, who apparently was hiding somewhere around here. We found some kind of phantom bird that kept disappearing whenever we got close. It was reasonable to assume that this was some sort of hint to finding the Servant of the Flame, but I take absolutely no pleasure in telling you that it took us an embarrassingly long time to remember that we were given a note. The highest bell at... Oh wait, hold on. At the highest bell at Wanderer's Refuge. Stay on over and see what they're finding. Yeah, that's 12 minutes of our lives that we'll never get back. Once we had rung the bell, following the clues actually resulted in the dude showing up, and guess what? He told us to go back to Reaper's Hideout. You know, the place that we had to sail past in order to get to Wanderer's Refuge in the first place. Not very efficient if you ask me. Once we had arrived, he spouted a whole bunch of expository monologue, you know the stuff I showed you at the start of the video, and at long last, we were given our laundry list. With a compass in hand, we could locate a conveniently spawned rowboat to begin our quest. Said quest also tells you to row the darn thing to your destination, but luckily for you, we are true gaming legends that don't play by the rules. You can absolutely use your ship to get the robot to the location, all you have to do is keep your ship a short ways away as to not spook the smuggler. Said smuggler is going to give you a scuffed ammo crate that doesn't actually reload your gun, and now you take this thing to the next island to hand it over to another smuggler. So far so simple, what's weird however is that there was a random mermaid on the next island. That usually indicates that another player is present, which was definitely concerning. I decided to scout the island to find that individual, and well, let's just say that I forgot what kind of cargo I was handling when I tried to dispose of a skeleton that chased me. Uh... Um... Someone blow up a robot? Yeah, that somebody was me. In my defense, someone told me that the Reaper robot could survive a gunpowder keg explosion with its armor. Comes to show that you can't trust Twitch chat as far as you can throw them. The quest failed and we were left robotless and depressed. Now we could go back to Reaper's hideout and restart the adventure, but I'm gonna be honest, I had bigger goals in mind. Also, there was another robot at this very island, so not all was lost. Obviously, I wanted the Reapers to win, and as much as blowing up robots helps to achieve that goal, there's another thing that we could do. If we take control of Golden Sands and ambush anyone trying to hand in supplies to Merrick, thereby denying points to our opposition, that would work just as well. So we headed on over to blow up another rowboat, set up a few supply crates to fuel our operation, and laid low until our enemies arrived. And well, let's just say that it didn't take long for our first customer to show up. 
to here. As long as you're moving your mouse. Um, behind us, behind us, Brandon. I see it, I see it. Let's get it. For how much we anticipated visitors to arrive at the dock, this backhanded beaching of their own vessel definitely caught us off guard. Our hot miking friend over here was easily disposed of, and upon closer inspection of his loot, a story began to emerge. It seemed like this guy was still new and didn't understand that he couldn't sell his treasure at Golden Sands Outpost. And even more impressively, he managed to get his ship solidly stuck on the island with even the physics engine not knowing what to do. Majestic as this was, the ship eventually despawned and our friend was nowhere to be seen. While I continued to hold it down on the outpost, Birdie took our empty vessel to look for another rowboat, as well as some gunpowder kegs to set up a trap. Brandon, meanwhile, decided to use the time to catch a few fish, and this is where we get into why I wanted to see Golden Sands burn in the first place. This is Merrick. Some of you might remember from the Megalodon episode that my friends and I were trying to sell some fish at a sea post, the exact sea post that we expected Merrick to be stationed at, but that lazy son of a gun had just left his position without appointing anyone to take on his job. And when we confronted him at the killer way, he still refused to buy our fish. Now look at this dude, once again being too high and mighty to be doing his job, still not buying any fish from us despite him being a member of the hunter's call. He didn't leave us a choice but to burn down the outpost. And that is exactly what we would do once Birdie arrived with a new shipment. We took the gunpowder kegs and created a stash away from Merrick so they wouldn't accidentally blow up while we fight other crews. And of course, we also blew up the robo to continue contributing to the Reaper's bones. At that point, Brandon had to go AFK for a bit to deploy the legendary rubber band controller strategy to keep the game from kicking him for inactivity. I kept holding down the outpost while Birdie went to grab more rowboats and kegs, but it was not long until he got some visitors. Galleon's rolling up on us. Get a bit, get right now? Okay. Yes, um, yes, yes. I'm not on the ship. Get over here. Birdie was definitely not lying, a galleon was coming dangerously close and it didn't have an obvious way to tell their allegiance, so we didn't know whether or not they wanted to fight. For this event, it is important to identify your allies because every player contributing for your side is an important asset at the end of the day. So I flew on over to find out where their allegiances lie. Are you guys Team Reaper or Team Hunters? I don't know what that means. The Adventure! I don't know! Just say Reapers, we're on the same side. Okay, Reaper. <laughs> These guys were either grade A actors or they legitimately were not aware of the current event. Either way, so long that they're not handing in supplies to Merrick, it was of no concern to us. I helped Birdie load up the ship with more gunpowder kegs before we returned to Golden Sands Outpost. We decided to set up a secondary gunpowder stash in case somebody finds the first one. Oh, by the way, you remember how the physics engine completely bugged out when that sloop beached itself on the spikes? Yeah, that wasn't the only time the physics were acting up. That's interesting. Well, um, Birdie the ship? It seems like the ship had bugged itself further into the pier than is normal, touching the kegs and fooling the engine into thinking it was a collision. I mean, hey, we only almost sank because of that, so not a big deal, am I right? Well, that was about the most action we had seen in the last couple hours, and once Brandon had returned, we began taking turns finding more and more rowboats to blow up. When it was my turn, I spotted several ships around, but none of them seemed to be interested in coming close to Golden Sands. I forgot to mention that we eventually found out who that mermaid belonged to, but at the island where I failed the adventure for us, and something told me that this individual may have warned the other crews when he saw us in full Reaper attire. So I returned the relic cash to Reaper's hideout, collected our supplies, blew up Merrick with the gunpowder kegs, and sailed on over to Sanctuary Outpost so we could portal hop onto a new server. Of course, we repeated all the same preparations in order to be able to hold down Golden Sands, and lo and behold, no less than 30 minutes after we arrived, somebody rolled up to hand in supplies. They jumped off the ship. I think they're walking swimming. Where's the gunpowder barrel? In the bush. I think we just have to take this like normal. Eyes on. Yes. Got him. Nice job, you got him. I'm taking this loot. Get a keg, get a keg. Alright, we have the keg. I'm getting ready to light. Okay, light Is it. Is there any more or was it just one guy? It was just one guy. Back on board. Alright, camp it. Get him, boys! Show him what the Reapers are made of. Reaper, Reaper dead. <laughs> <laughs> Help you, Merrick. I mean, you're taking the L right now, so I don't know. After hours of camping Golden Sands on two different servers, I was happy to see the operation go just absolutely smoothly. We invested minimal resources, had no casualties to boot, and stopped that guy from handing in any of the supplies he bought. And since our gunpowder stash was still plenty stocked, we could set up another one such trap immediately to wait for our next customer. And that customer did not take long to arrive, except who ended up on that vessel was not who we expected. Honey, we're home! <laughs> it's them! They're back! <laughs> 
Okay, I think I have some explaining to do. When we originally portal hopped onto the server, we immediately found two rowboats to take to Golden Sands. But guess what? There was already somebody at the outpost. Two ladies who insisted on talking their way out of that situation instead of us immediately sinking their ship. And tell you what, the reason I stopped running the Reaper Emissary despite that being all I did for the first like three months of me playing this game is because just attacking everybody you see gets really boring really fast. Point being, I was under the impression that these ladies had already sold their supplies and as such there was no point in sinking their ship. But when they came back, I realized that I had misunderstood the situation. Are these supplies for Merrick? Yes, we have to deliver them for the- I cannot the allow that. I'm sorry, I cannot allow that. Come on, please. please. We, we just want the commendation. Please, just once. And then we'll, we're will we gonna do the reaper session. You're gonna please have to have do twice as many reaper things to make up for this. Yes. Sure. All right. I will do it. That's a deal. Oh, I'm expecting two robots here. You, you are free to pass. Now, you can call me soft all you want, but fact of the matter is that if we stop them now, they'll just try to do it again on another server anyway. But by having them agree to bring two robots to the outpost, at least we can make sure that their impact was counteracted. Recruiting new reapers into our ranks could prove to be useful in the future, and as such, I was not feeling too bothered about them completing their adventure, and I am pleased to let you know that they kept their word and did roll up with a robot to further our cause. Though their next delivery was being intercepted by a Merrick supporter, we wouldn't stand for that. It was our duty as reapers to ensure the delivery of those explosives to further our war effort. Also, we spent like six hours just sitting at an outpost at that point, so we'll take any excuse we can get to actually set sail. We announced ourselves to our fellow reapers before aggressively approaching the enemy vessel. They're behind the wave. I think you hit the, you hit the sail. Sail, 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 sail. I'm going in. They catch sail, they catch sail. They're moving again. Left side, left side, left side. The PvP flag oh, is our friend. The PvP flag ally. PvP flag ally. Thank you. Oh crap, I overshot. I might get on. I have Leonard bombs. They're gone, they're, they're gone, done. this is it. Oh, the girl sunk too. Oh, what? No! No, you guys sunk. Okay, maybe this was not our finest rescue mission ever, but you gotta celebrate victories where you can get them. The ladies got their revenge and our brigantine was still kicking so we could take them along and help out in finishing their adventure. Honestly, my favorite part of this event is the fact that we finally have some sort of us versus them thing going on in Sea of Thieves. The Reaper's bones just inherently always attack anyone they see, including other Reapers, which just gets really boring after a while. But by giving us a reason to stand united against the other companies, the whole thing just felt a lot more fun. I really hope that Rare continues to go in that direction, and whoever ends up winning the war over Golden Sands, I'm sure they got something cool that's gonna come as a result. If you wanna see something cool right now, then what about you check out my last episode in which Birdie and I explored the breadth of activities available to the Order of Souls. Things definitely did not go as expected, and you can find the code on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching, don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a day filled with richer on the sea and until next time peace